Hello, my name is Dr. Trofena Mukuna. I am the Executive Director of Organization for Social Science Research in Eastern and Southern Africa, based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I'm here to take you through the research journey that we have done in collaboration with uh, PeaceNet Kenya, uh, EGAD C1, and also partnering with IDRC, who are our donors. This is in response to a call for proposals sent out by the Department of uh, Governance and Justice at IDRC. Welcome to this research on youth inclusive mechanisms in preventing and countering violent extremism in the IGAD region. Our research journey starts with our inception meeting in Nairobi. After we received funding from IDRC, we started with an inception meeting where we invited various stakeholders to come and share our idea and feed into it. Uh, we shared with them our objectives, we shared with them our methodology, and we needed their input into what we were going to do. Our objectives are four. Uh, based on the drivers of violent extremism. Uh, secondly, we were looking at the policy environment. Thirdly, the interventions that have been in place to prevent or counter violent extremism in the IGAD region. And uh, lastly, we were looking at what has worked, what has not worked, and why. While we were doing all this, we mainstreamed gender in all the activities and objectives. Our methodology is innovative in, in such a way that we are bringing on board all the stakeholders who are beneficiaries of this research project. We have academia, we have media, uh, the CSOs, we have the security personnel, we have policy makers on board. We, our idea is we want to share with them we want to work with them throughout this journey and share with them the findings of this research for research uptake. In Uganda, we also had an inception workshop that highlights and emulates the same objective that we had in Nairobi, Kenya, because we have the same methodology, the same objective, the same uh, research questions that we are pursuing. So it was represented by government officials at a very high level, uh, civil society organizations, academia, people from the media, and um, people from various backgrounds. And the intention is to have different views on how to include youth in designing mechanisms that are inclusive and youth should be part and parcel of prevention and countering of violent extremism. And therefore, the Ugandan government embraced this entirely and we started working with the government of Uganda to guide us and work together and bring up an inclusive mechanism that would benefit not only Uganda, Kenya, or, uh, but also in the IGAD region. And therefore, there was need to have a very clear methodology and ways by which we will be collecting data from Uganda and Kenya on the basis that these issues are very sensitive and requires a unique way of collecting data and not necessarily the social science research methodology that people use, the traditional research methodology that people use in academia and so forth. But this one was unique. And therefore, we had to refine our tools. We had to look at um, how to securitize the research, how it matters, and how governments view us while collecting data because of the sensitivity of the research. And therefore, we had a meeting, we had a research methodology training in Mombasa, that included the uh, intelligence gathering research methods, which was offered to us by security personnel from both Kenya and Uganda, on top of what we already know, 
in the normal research methodology. And this intelligence gathering research helps us to differentiate what is sensitive for government and what needs to go for this research. And therefore there was harmonization and a government of Uganda and Kenya welcomed this approach, this methodology, the ways by which we collected data. Very, very, very interesting and very, very important. And this has paved us the way to prepare ourselves and have a well-refined tool to go back to, to go to the um, community to go and start doing our baseline studies. So that was very important. This is another unique contribution that this research has brought. After the research team was trained, there was need to also train the research assistants who were going to be data collectors in the field. Now, in both Kenya and Uganda, we made this a very serious priority. There are three things that we had in our ethical considerations. The first one was we needed a permit, a research permit from the Kenyan government and also the Ugandan research authorities. Then the idea of getting consent from the participants uh, who are the, the ones who are responding to the, to the research issues that we were raising. And thirdly, getting consent from the local authorities whom we were, uh, we were working with because they were the gatekeepers. We couldn't get into the community without the local authorities. Now, this research that we are carrying is about the, the micro level and the macro level of research because we are looking at the individual, the household, and the issues of youth inclusive mechanisms and also looking at it at the national and the policy level merging this together. It is a bottom-up, top-down approach to research. D during our inception meetings in Kenya and Uganda, we were advised that there are areas of concentration that should be part of our sample uh, research areas. And these requests were mostly being recommended on the basis that the government had already some idea and int on what we would be getting. And therefore, we followed these ideas, we followed this um, uh, advice very strictly. And also, on the policy level, we were advised by the IGAD, C1, that there are certain key spot areas that it would be interesting for the intergovernmental uh, organizations and it would benefit IGAD at that policy level. And therefore, we included quite a number of areas and sampled these areas and concentrated in specific areas in Kenya and in Uganda. And this gave us opportunity to use all the tools that we needed, both the quantitative tools uh, that Dr. Trofena has mentioned, and also the qualitative data, including focus group discussions, observations, interviews, and so forth. And therefore, it became very, very good that we had a very good mix of a sample of our uh, respondents and data. As mentioned earlier, we had various uh, data collection methods because this is a mixed methods group. We needed to hybrid and do a triangulation of our findings. And uh, to start with, the focus group discussions were not homogeneous. We separated the male and female youth. Then there was a mixed group where we brought them together to find out what their views were. We also had, um, we also separated the local leaders, the community members. We separated them and met them separately, male and female. But also we had a mixed group that we brought together so that we can compare their perceptions on the issues of youth inclusive mechanisms in preventing and countering violent extremism, specifically the drivers, the policy environment, the interventions that are in place, 
what has worked, what has not worked, and why. And therefore we got key informants carefully selected and some of them were chosen on the basis that um, we snowballed them, on the basis that we would know one person and then we snowball and ask for more key informants. These were from youth leaders who were very, very important for, for us and they deal directly with the youth, both male and female. We had religious uh, organizations of different denominations, not just one religious group. We also had uh, civil society organizations, including women associations uh, from all uh, dimensions who are dealing with issues of violent extremism from both Kenya and Uganda. We had government officials, as mentioned before, very important and key because of the role that this research would actually play to, the, to give uh, the government the opportunity to have this tool and mechanisms to involve youth. So government officials were also included. We had academia from both um, tertiary, secondary, and sometimes also um, mostly from the university. And we talked to vice chancellors, we talked to professors, we talked to uh, various uh, academic uh, personnel in both Kenya and Uganda. Most importantly, we had security actors involved, both in Kenya and in Uganda. And in some cases, we have been advised that today we may not go into certain areas, tomorrow it would be unsafe. So both all these actors were very, very, very important in coining and putting together this research process. So after we had collected the data every day, we had a debrief. This was very important to just help us uh, bring us up to speed to know how, have, how are we performing. Throughout the research journey and throughout the field work, we were with the field team, the research team. The research team which composed of PeaceNet, uh, ID, uh, IDRC official, uh, we also had the Osrea and IGAD officials. We were with them throughout to ensure quality of the research. We also participated in collection of the data. At the end of the day, we would meet and sit and sift through all that we have done so that we can know the way forward and make changes that are necessary, if any. So our research, uh, our research group was in the field for two weeks in Kenya and two weeks in Uganda. We were the IGAD C1, Osurea and PISNET together with our research assistants. Together with them, we were also accompanied with the government officials. They were with us all through. After every day, we sat together and had a debrief. In this debrief, we were interested in knowing how far we are going, are we collecting the right information and data, what challenges were our research team members experiencing and we would solve them at that particular time. It was highly participatory. Beyond the daily debrief that Dr. Trofena has mentioned, for each country and for each group and for every day that was being done and conducted. We also had final debrief for Uganda, final debrief for Kenya. And the responsible people, the responsible research assistants who were heading the researchers together with us were called and convened to go through the material that we have collected to assess the situation that they encountered and some of the problems they encountered to see that we really had quality and we have products that are genuine and we can rely on and begin to process and bring out very important report. This was key. This was very important for us. And the debriefs were all fantastic in both countries. And therefore now we have come to a state where we did a desktop review 
which is also a, a very important report to understand what is out there in literatures. And we have proceeded to um, analyze the data and put it together in a report. And this report is what we want to present to you today. The purpose is to make you understand and evaluate and validate the information we have represented in this report truly reflects the views of the stakeholders we have met and the views of the people that we interviewed and collected data from. And it is an important document that the government and IGAD can embrace. So this is what we are presenting to you today. And we are grateful if you can put your effort together and give us uh, your input so that we refine some of the information that might have been overrepresented in the, in the report or underrated in the report so that we can have a very up-to-date report for IGAD and uh, respective countries of the IGAD. So this having been an action research, we welcome you to give us input into our research findings so that we develop a research evidence paper that will be the basis for the development of a training manual for TOTs of various categories. We have identified the civil society organizations, the security personnel, academia, uh, media practitioners, who will all use this manual in looking at issues of violent youth inclusive mechanisms in preventing and countering violent extremism. After the manual, we are all after the manual we are going to go into piloting the manual in the areas where we collected the data. Because these are the same people who have contributed to the development of the manual. It is from there also that we will also have a learning alliance. Uh, this will be a, an online platform which will be at two levels. We shall have the local level and also the policy level. Thereafter, we will do uh, an endline survey to assess our achievement of the interventions that we have put in place. Thank you very much. Walk with us through this journey.